Well, I'll tell you what, Scott, it's great to uh, for us to finally connect. Yeah, man, absolutely. Been too long. Yeah, it has been. I was gonna say, and you know, I, I feel like a, certain, a few things have happened in the world since last we got to hang out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a while. I mean, the last time we hung out was the movie Black Panther, right? Oh, was that long? Yeah. That that's three when years ago. Black Panther come out. That feels like a 2017 thing. It was 2000. It was February of 2018. So two years ago, more than two years ago. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, we got to change that. I mean, I, I I know we have this global pandemic thing getting in our right, way. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, so listen, like, so it's what we talked about. You know, um, it's funny. I had done this uh, Zoom thing with my um i'm gonna call her an intern but she really was my student um ashleyana right. i don't know if you've had a chance to see any of the um the youtube videos with uh myself and her i've seen your sketchy goichi videos but i haven't seen uh, anything of her i don't even know who she is hold on yeah she's on she's on instagram i think it's um uh, don't press me to, to remember her instagram remember tag. it remember it i'll do is when i do the, do a video of this i'll put it in the uh put it in the notes put it in the uh description um i think it's like ash illustrations or ash well but her name is ashliana um for uh, felix f-e-l-i-x on instagram and so what i've been doing with her on the sketchy goichi channel is essentially having conversations and and talking about art and her basically um being her sort of like i don't know art mentor i guess is the best way to describe it um right I, I really like she's she's really talented and, and um, she's already on the path. I just wanted to figure out if there's some ways, being a professional, that I right. could help her. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. In, do, in doing so, I formed like this little idea. Have you ever heard of um, uncomfortable conversations with a black man on YouTube? Oh no, no. Oh, you got to check that out. Yeah, it, uh, it's phenomenal. It's you know in this climate that we're going through now with all the social unrest and sort of the black and white relations that are happening in America. I it's uncomfortable and the first thing that comes up is uncomfortable com uh, yeah. conversation it's with a black man. I'm gonna subscribe. Yeah, you gotta check it out. It's great. It's just a great conversation. Um, and it's done in a really respectful way. It's a, to allow, um, you know, the white folks and the black folks to kind of have a dialogue. Right, yeah. right, right. And so what I thought of what would be fun is if I did comfortable conversations with, with a, a white guy, guy. <laughs> with a black guy yeah. or, or artists you know whichever um i'm both and so that's why i figured like so i did <clears> I <throat> one um and essentially it was an interview session it's like ash the student was interviewing me the the teacher which is really cool because you know obviously i taught her over at uh, at umass dartmouth and and so i that's how i met her Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of cool, man. It was like you know, she 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 was really composed, and she asked me a series of questions, and I answered them. And that was the first. I'm calling that the first edition. Cool. So, so maybe what we're doing here, we'll call it the uh, the second edition. But it really just be two buddies talking about right, right, right. Talking about our our experiences in art, our our years of knowing each other. It's been right. ten years. Ten years. All right. So to that end, where did where do we act? I'm trying to think. When did we actually meet, and where? We met at the. South Coast Toy and Comic in the hotel. Oh, was it at like Se the, the Seaport <laughs> Hotel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Port Hotel Fair, Haven, Massachusetts. Uh, are you recording now? Yeah, I'm on. I've uh, been recording. I have a picture. I have a picture. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you have a picture? Yeah, oh, let excellent. me just uh, let me just share my the screen. Right screen share. Uh, if it, if it will allow you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, right, share my screen. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so you're, see, you're, see, you're, you're, you're a meet, web meeting guy, an expert. All right. Uh, so, so let's uh, let's do this. Can you see my screen? I can. I can see it fully and clearly. All and right. I can a little you. There's even a little you picture in the corner. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I just copied it yesterday. Uh, be fun. Oh, here it is. And we, I'm sure we haven't changed it. We haven't changed one bit, one bit, right? We look uh, I'm still a big dude with the same haircut. You're, you just, <laughs> we both lot of got a little bit more gray in our face, but other than that, yeah, pretty much the same. Them guys, right? That that's uh, that was you. 
And then uh, this was the commission I got from you. All right, hold on a second. All I got right now is a Blizzard Call of Duty Modern oh, Warfare. Oh, oh, let me close that. There you go. Now I got you again. I got you full, me, full on. Full on me. All right, let me do yep. it again. Let me share the screen. Here yep. we go. That's what I wanted. So that's that's the first oh. commission I got from you. Wow. <laughs> Old school. Big I forgot time. you. I forgot how much you like you love the uh, Colossus. Era. Oh yeah, and then this was the picture of us when I first introduced myself to you, right there. Let's see. Right now, I got Colossus. No. Uh, let me let me stop share. It's weird. It only lets me share one image. What? Uh, there you go. Oh, you're back. Oh, look at that! That's that's <laughs> where we that's where we uh, we first met, and I'm, I introduced myself. Look at the look on your face. Oh, I was like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Oh. He's way too big to be standing in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. Look at the old, yeah, so old sort of convention convention that, hall, and the that was game. February of 2010. Wow, man. Yeah, things, things done changed. This I, I I brought another human being in this world since then. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and your right, son, your son graduated from college, and yep. yeah, son, yeah, no, it's, that's a wild thing. As a yeah. matter of fact, I want to say, like, I feel like we all in those early convention era, like, we all became fast friends, right? Wouldn't you say we all sort of were, um, you know, quick buddies? We all, I think we, we, if not that session, the very next one, we all. Oh got yeah, to yeah, you know, once you meet an artist, fellow artist at a convention, you guys all hang out, you're friends forever, right? You know what I want people to understand, Scott, is like, um, like one thing that, that people this year in particular don't have a sense on is right. that that comic book convention life. Right. You know, right. Right. Like for artists, um, should I say? Let me actually let's do a historical. What it was like for artists in that sure. era, that in your sure. era. So like, so first off, like, how was that first convention for you? Like. Were you able to kind of establish? Actually, even better, better than that. Before we get into the details of that, um, tell everybody about yourself. Okay, so uh, I'm Scotty Hamilton. I'm Hamiltons. Right behind. Me. <laughs> yeah, Hamiltons. Uh, I started drawing caricatures in 1992. Wow! I'll, I'll actually show you my first caricature. Oh, I got to see this. Uh, share your screen again. Share that screen. Uh, close that, close that, close that. All right. So do you see my uh, Windows Explorer here? Yep. Okay. I got, I got the gallery so, view. Um, right, well, well, let me go back even further. I, I've been drawing since I was five. So <laughs> this, is, this is one of the drawings I did uh, right on the left here. This was in 1983 or 84. The far left, can you see it? I the see it. Look, the three, tiny. Right. Can you zoom? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's zoom in. Let's see this sucker big. Let's see it in all its 19, what did you say, 1983 glory? Yeah, so this one on the left here, uh, I had some anatomy issues. But, uh, <laughs> it was 1983, 84. I have no, I never had any formal training. Right. How um, old were you then? That was 17, 16, 17. Right. I want to see it big. How come I can't see it big? Um, it's filling my screen. Oh, not mine. I don't know. That's weird. Um, and then in the middle here is I, 1990. I did a pencil drawing, kind of reimagined it. And then this one on the far right I did in my iPad when I had this. Let's see. I started drawing digitally in 2016 in May. Yeah. I remember your transition was fairly recent, right? Yeah. It's digital. been about four years, four plus years that I've been drawing digitally. Right. Uh, and so this was the, the drawing digitally. Okay. All right. So that was that was that drawing. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'm bringing myself in on the on the little the little pictures. Uh, so the second caricature. Okay. So right here. Here we go. Oh, there you go. I kind of see it. Can you see? Whoa. What happens if you double click on that icon? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. There we go. All right. Can you see that? No, nope, it's just really tiny. It's still, uh, I'm still in uh, thumbnail mode. That's weird. 
I wonder if Zoom just zoomed. Uh, I wonder if it's a Zoom issue. I in, don't know. Any... It might be because uh, uh, I can see it full screen. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to pinch and make it as wide as I can. And I've got it. I've got it. At, I'm using my uh, I'm using. I'm going manual on a digital. Okay. Round. <laughs> <laughs> so I made it a little larger on my screen. Okay. So I've got two characters. Uh, so the one on the left uh, was my very first caricature in 1992. Look at that. And I see it signed by Scott. 92. Yep, yep. And then the one on the right here was six years ago. Wow. Okay. I, I had done a comparison to show people what practice, you know, does over the years. Yeah, absolutely. You can see the refinement, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Just uh, the, the little bit of uh, facial kind of 3D thing, a little bit more dimension. Yep. Uh, and so I, remember, the, I remember your evolution too, Scott. I remember when you first got started. Yeah. Even though that early convention photo of us, you know, I just remember like, you know, the, the style advancement over the years. Right, right. So this is what this this is one of my uh, convention picks. Now, what was your pitch? What was your pitch line when we were at the convention table? I can draw you as anything. <laughs> That's right. So I can any draw you as anything, any character, any superhero, an inanimate object, whatever you want, I can draw you as that. That's right. Uh, and, so, and I know this because I sat next to you at many a table, and I, yeah, and I, yeah. and I heard yeah. that I heard that I heard the line. Yeah, and uh, and this was uh, this is pen and ink and Copics. Yeah, and that's important for um, for people to know that like because we you and I we both work digital. Um, I think people think that that's all there ever was. <laughs> right, right. No, this is this is paper and erase pencils and erasers. Yeah, pencils, erasers, markers, you know, some, sometimes white out, right? Right, it's, right. You know, so you can still, yes, kids, you can still draw on paper and use markers or paint. Yes, yeah. it can be done. Uh, so oh. here was here was one of the first digital things I redid. Oh, wow. Hold on, let me see. So I drew, I drew this on the left here in 19, in 2005, so 15 years ago. Yep. And I basically, this is when I was working out, so I was in good shape. Uh, uh -oh. So I, I put the camera on the oven yeah. and I made that pose. That's my actual picture. Nice. Uh, but so then, you know, when I started drawing the iPad, this is two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Uh, I redrew it and put some effort into it because I drew the pencil version. And then yeah. I just kind of said, ah, I'm done. I'm happy with that. And then I never went any further with it. That's, so an, I, you know, so, that's important for people to know, Scott. Like, right. You know, I, don't you find like, and you've had, I'm sure you've had a ton of young artists come to you at the convention table and show you their work and and they they pour all their time and energy into a piece and things are messed up because they don't spend the time doing the under sketching. And right, the under right, right. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. So this one here, I, the middle one, I redrew my picture. Um, I obviously just traced the face, but, uh, and uh, I re reworked the hands, redrew the muscles and everything, and then also colored it digitally. That was uh, that was probably one of my first digital drawings I did on my iPad. Yeah, not bad for a first timer. But now, what were you using for an app then? Uh, I use uh, I use uh, just specifically Adobe Draw. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see this Wonder Woman one I did. I do. I got it. It's like Wonder Woman, but other 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 characters along along these, in there. These are characters from the movie. Yep. Uh, but they're obviously their caricature as well. Uh, yep. This this took me hours, probably a good sixteen hours total, to draw and, uh, all of this. One hundred percent digital. One hundred percent digital. Every, each character was drawn separately, and then I put them together in Photoshop. Ah. Uh, and then put one, and then uh, the actual print I made was one dress woman, so I didn't get in, in trouble with any copyright stuff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you um, you could have got away with putting the. Uh the Wonder Woman logo even further behind them. Right, right. Uh, but but so people you're talking about before with people uh, with with drawing and they draw something and they think that's it. That's uh, I'm done with that drawing. Yeah. This Chris Pine took me seven tries to get that face right. There you are. Now I got you large, large in a charge. I got you. I swear to God, the little guy behind you is gonna smack you right in the head, both hands. Yeah, he's whack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sharing this now. All right. Ah, full screen. Now oh, we got it. you got it. Yes. All right. So that that was uh, that Chris Pine took me seven tries. 
Yeah, you captured the mouth though. You got the good, you got the Chris Pine mouth. Yeah, but each <laughs> and, and this is also something that a lot of artists do is they don't try different things. They'll they'll try something, it doesn't work, and they'll just give up on it. Yeah, um, that's, I'm, that's... I'm 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 horrible at drawing hair. Hair is my bane. <laughs> oh, and I'm drawing hair. Yeah, but you have to do it because people have hair. So <laughs> this was this was my experimentation. <laughs> well, some people do, not us. Yeah. But this was one of my attempts at using shapes for hair instead of yeah. actual hair itself. You know what it feels like to me, Scott? It feels very like um, Art Deco. Oh, well. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau. The kind of like stained glass kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it feels like. It's stylized. Right. stylized. So let me do this. Let me share that other image you wanted to see bigger. So this is us. Oh, flying. boom. You us, got it. This is us <laughs> flying to... Um, Detroit, uh, Novi, Michigan, oh, for yeah. uh, Motor City Comic Con, the very first Comic Con. You called me and said, uh, "You said I got a table at uh, Motor City Comic Con, and uh, you know, if you want to have the table, you want to go with me, we'll go." I said, "Yeah, let's do that." Nice. It's probably one of the best shows I've ever had. I don't know about you. Uh, well, no, I got. It was a great show because we got to hang out. Right, right. I mean, to be honest with you, and this is going to sound really like crazy to a lot of people. Like for me, the cons. We're about the hang. I know, and I mean zero. It's about, a, it's about having right? a good time, dinner, food, good food, good times. Right? Yeah, the, absolutely. The money's, the money's great, but seeing your friends, that's what it's all about. A hundred percent. And and the interaction with the with the, um, the folks who uh, attended. This, this was also Motor City. Ah. Uh, I was good. sitting there, you were sitting there. Uh, yeah. yeah, we were crushing that show. Yeah, yeah, that was a great show. I mean, that, I mean, you know, luckily, you know, we were very fortunate, you know, I got the free table and I think they even flew us out. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, they didn't fly us out, but they uh, they gave us a free table. Yeah. They gave us a car that picked us up and drove us back to the airport. Right, that's with right. With names on a sign, which, that was, <laughs> oh. that was a first for me. <laughs> we were uh, VIPs. Right, right. Uh, here's another one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at us, look how young. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, this was, uh, you had just drawn me as Colossus. <laughs> yeah, I think the audience is starting to see a, a trend here. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I drew you as Iron Man, but I don't have an image on this computer. Oh, you don't have that one? No, I don't have it on this computer. Yeah. But the, and then this was us at our dinner. We had sushi. Oh, yeah. Look at this, we Bob. Walk, Bob. Yeah, we walk. We, <laughs> Bob's taking a bite out of Roger. Yeah. Does that Daniel go there? Yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And, and then Agnes Garbowska and Chris Uminga and... Chrissy Zulo and Matt Fletcher and Kevin. Sarah, Sarah with us? Sarah Richard? Sarah, and Sarah Richard was with us at that dinner. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Maybe even Craig, uh, Craig Russo? Uh, no, Craig was not at that one. Oh, okay. Uh, Rich Woodall, maybe? Uh, nope, nope. It was uh, just. I'm just going to name every artist we know until like. Right, until right, right, right. People. No, It'll just the that. just the ones I had just mentioned. <laughs> that was uh, a blast. Let's see, let's see what else do I have here. This was us at your birthday party. Look at us, huh? Your Slim. 1970s birthday party. Look at those bell bottoms my wife made. <laughs> Classic. You know, it's funny. By the way, I'm not dressed in 70s garb because it was a uh, surprise, surprise party. party. Right, surprise yeah. party. Yeah, that's why I'm the one knucklehead at the whole show, uh, the whole thing not dressed in 70s wear. You so, know, forgive me. So l l let's do this. Let's. Um, I'll say how I got started in drawing, yeah. and then you, then you can do the same. Please. So when I was five years old. 1972 my dad bought me a comic book of superman action comics i don't remember the number i actually have the actual issue oh that i found that i actually drew this picture from wow and i bought it on ebay uh, so this was the picture right here this is superman that i drew when i was five years old i copied this picture right and so that was that's my very first piece of art that i ever did was drawing That's, that Superman on when I was five. You know what's so funny is like everyone seems, and this is you know I don't know how many little ones are gonna watch this, but like inspiration comes from it, from a variety of different sources, right? Right, you, right, right. When that thing you check out when you're four, five, six years old, or, or a little older than that, is gonna be the it puts you on a path. You never know, right? Yeah, and then uh, you know I drew. I would draw big, huge robot battles and space stuff. And you know, second, first and second grade, I would draw motorcycles. Yeah. 
for kids in first grade and sell them for like a quarter. Ooh, oh, um, you was an entrepreneur. Yeah, I was already making money when I was in first grade. <laughs> that was some milk money right there. Yeah, and then in middle school, uh, I did some drawing. I actually entered a contest for a library and I drew reading is hot on a poster and it was a human torch flying up in the air. Cool. And I actually won the contest and I have the award. I got a book that was signed by the teacher that entered me. Nice. Uh, I still have the book. Wow. How do you, uh, yeah. how, do you make, how do you keep all that stuff? I, that stuff is long going in my life. How do you, stuff, how do you read that? Stuff that's important to me, like the very yeah. first award I ever got as an artist, I keep. Okay, good. You, well, you're a better man than me. I, yeah. I, I've, I've lost track of so much stuff over the years. And on a side note, this was drawn of me at Kurt Quincy Market uh, when I was oh. uh, when I was 18. That's that's what you mean. That's the Scott Larry Bird days. I looked like Larry Bird. I had a cheesy mustache. <laughs> I, had, I had a chin though. I had a chin. <laughs> um, so yeah. Classic. So, how did you get started? Well, I mean, I got started very similar to you. I mean, drawing. Um, from comic books. I, the very first comic I ever remember uh, reading is um, uh, Sandman. And this had to be 70, I don't know, five or six, whenever, when we were, whenever we start reading. I'm, I was born in 70, so I was about five or six right. years old. And then I remember distinctly reading a um, Fantastic Four. And this is, you're probably talking back then, it might've been Jack Kirby, like Joe Sina, Inks, you know, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, probably. That yeah. era, and that was it. Jack Kirby was probably the one that turned me on. And kids, anybody watching, Google Google yourself, do yourself a favor and Google yourself some Jack Kirby art. Oh yeah, you know what? It's funky and it's crazy, but it's cool. Oh, so cool and dynamic and powerful, right? And you know, maybe somewhere along the way, I caught a little bit of that Jack Kirby DNA and I mean very little. Um, so, you know, so whenever I'm rendering, I try to infuse it with a lot of that kind of, give it some of that Jack Kirby love, you know? That, that the power and the line work and the, yeah, the energy. yeah, I try to go for that. But yeah, I mean, I'm very similar to you. I mean, I would draw for kids in school. Um, you know, when you're, the, you remember being the kid who could draw in class, right? Yeah. yeah. What was that like? I actually have a story about that. So I was in sixth grade and uh, the teacher was Mr. Wondolowski, who I'm still in contact with on Facebook to this day. The, wow. um, <clears throat> I would draw a little, I would draw Spider-Man hanging from a roof of a web. Yep. And then the word bubble would be my notes. Ah, so uh, he he looked at me and he said, uh, "Mr. Hamilton, could you pay attention and uh, see me after class?" I'm like, "Okay, I'm paying attention, but all right." And he said, uh, "He said, I, I, and I, I don't want to discourage the drawing, but it'd be better probably if you paid attention in the class." And I wasn't doing bad in the class. I said I was paying attention. It's how I take my notes, or I said something sixth gradery in those words. <laughs> And uh, and he looked at my he looked at my notebook and my pictures and my word bubbles and he said you know what keep on drawing. Nice. And so he gave, yeah, I did. He gave you you know it's funny I have a similar story I remember being back in I want to say it was about third grade and I had switched schools so I had a new teacher mm -hmm. and um, so what I would do is I would finish my my homework assignment and uh, I or or classroom assignment you know your little timetables or whatever i flip it over and i would draw spider-man or iron man or whatever in the back of it right and so eventually the teacher flipped it over and realized oh wait this kid can draw and then so from that point forward i would use that to get extra credit <laughs> on everything all right i would do my assignment yeah. complete yeah flip that sucker over and draw a full full illustration on the back of it you know and that's kind of like i became the kid who could draw in class and i'm sure many people can identify with that Absolutely. So here's another one that I drew. Uh, this was in high school as well. So no, this I... is Star Fox versus Thor. Oh, okay. And he says, what does he say? Uh, he's basically yelling at Thor and telling him he can't win a fight without his hammer. That... And so Thor throws his hammer at Star Fox and Star Fox catches it. And then at the time when Thor would lose his hammer, he turned back into Donald Blake. Right, I remember. So then Thor punches him, punches him in the face. <laughs> you see Dr. Uh, Blake's head in the wall. Smacks the hammer on the ground with these spectacular Cthulhu sound effect. And says, now I'm the mighty Star Fox. And he's got Thor's hammer. So that I drew that, and that's one of the things I drew in high school, just playing around. Nice. While, while I was in the classroom. You know what? You know what? That brings me to a good question. Like, 
did you ever have um, aspirations right around that time to, to be a comic book artist? You know, I always wanted to be a comic book artist, but I was always a lazy artist. Uh oh. I loved to draw, but learning how to do sequentials at that age, I had no, I had no interest in drawing an actual comic book. And every time I would draw, I'd try to draw panel stuff on purpose, not just for fun, like I was doing there. Yeah. Which, which is funny because the dynamics in those panels, if I kept practicing that, I probably would have been able to do comics just as easily. Uh, so I was, you know, very, uh, I've been a procrastinator my whole life, which is horrible. <laughs> that's uh, and, uh, you know, uh, let me tell you about it. Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, kick up your feet. We're going to have the that's uh, right, that's right. comfortable conversations with a black artist. Gonna have <laughs> a little, little session. We're going to have a little session right now. So, you know, so the actual, psychiatry session. Yeah, I'm the sorry. actual effort to put into doing that I never was interested in. You know, um, it's funny. It's it, Here's the thing. And you saying that, it's like, um, I would never classify myself as lazy per se as an artist. However, I did recognize at a very early age how challenging it is for guys to do se sequential comic book art. Oh yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's very difficult. That's st and here's the thing I learned growing as I grew and as an artist, you know, who was doing storyboards and whatever else I was doing, is the storytelling aspect of it is so right. difficult in a single image. Right, right. But imagine having to carry that out from panel to panel to panel, from page to page, and working from a script and the whole thing. And it was, um, it made me want to do single images. Right, storyboards, <laughs> storyboards, yeah. yeah single uh, images but, at a time. But right. you have to learn perspective, you have to learn anatomy, all different types of anatomy, for shortening. There's so many things that we both use now, yep. are, but just in one image. Yeah, and, and, it's, and, and to carry that story from to move the, re the re uh, viewer or reader's eyes from one panel down to the next and yeah. across, it's not easy. <laughs> so what, what got you into doing comic conventions? What was the first thing that got you into drawing at a comic convention? Because I've got well, a good story. To be honest with you, what, what happened with me with, um, with comic books uh, and conventions was, I, I think it was, it was probably my buddy, you remember Mark, uh, Mark Gomes? Yes. Uh, yeah, Mark Gomes. South Coast, South Coast. Yep, from South Coast, and um, and of course Steve Perry. Mm -hmm. uh, the two of them, they they you know they formed that initial like VFW show right across the, the street. I before. did that. I met you at that show, but I didn't really talk to you. That was right. my first show with them. That one room. Yes. Where that corner was comics and toys, and this corner was like a bunch of us on card tables. Yes. Folding tables. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think uh, who else was there? I think Bob Almond was there. Um, yeah, so a couple of like, you know, I guess, I guess we, nobody will mind us saying the old school guys, you know? Right, right, right. That was got over a decade ago. Wow. And um, so, yeah, so those two, they, you know, I used to hang out with them. We used to, we had the standing, like every Saturday we'd go to the Chinese buffet. Right. And all we would hang out. And by the way, um, those of you who are in COVID moment, there was a, there was a point in time where you would like gather with your friends. At in places. A restaurant. <laughs> 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 I know, I know it's, it seems like a full long era but yeah that'll come back by the way it'll come back but um yeah so we would get together and they formed this convention and they invited me to join and and that was my introduction to it, it was um steve perry and, and mark gomes they just brought me in you know they knew i drew they knew i um did a lot of work for uh, hasbro so i had some toy cred right you know? right and it, it being the south coast toy and uh, it was a toy and comic show i think right. the toy part of it i, I had that covered <laughs> so yeah that so, was it uh, so that's probably 11 years you've been doing that. Yeah, 11 okay. years. So if I'm I, gonna- here's the, thing, I'm, here's, the, here's the thing, Scott, though. I, I used to do, um, I used to go to comic conventions before oh, yeah. that. I used to, uh, you know, obviously do, we did the ones in Boston at the Heinz mm -hmm. Convention Center. As a matter of fact, did you ever go to the one when they were at the uh, Radisson? Um, I've been to every single show it, they've had since Boston was Boston until right. it turned into Fan Expo. There you go. All right, so we, yeah, so we, we're, again, we're, you know, and actually, we used to hang out with Frankie, remember Frankie Washington? Yeah, yeah. Yep, Frankie, who still does yep. conventions. Yep. So actually, you know, ironically enough, Frankie um, is kind of my reintroduction into sort of the comic book world. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know, you, you probably do, like Frankie and I, we went to art school together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the late 80s, early 90s. And so Frankie, like at that time, I was kind of transitioning away from comic books. And so Frankie, he's with his passion and his joy and his love of comic books and yeah, giant yeah. robots and Godzilla and monsters and, and kaiju yeah. yeah he dragged me right back in 
you know, just when I thought I was out, they dragged me back in, you know? But, um, but, but here's the thing though, like when you and I met at that con back in the day, we knew that like, you know, whenever we would do a show, we'd all, it all, almost always we'd be together, right? Yeah. We yeah. almost always were in the same section of Artist Alley. Well, what right? it was is the first couple of times we did a convention, we just happened to be next to each other. And then after that, I started asking, please put me next to Roger Andrews. So that's how it happened. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you and I just started, when we did conventions, we both said to the organizer, put us next to each other. So, uh, golf, golf, 27 years ago, ah. when I was 26, I used to sell toys and, and card sets and comics at conventions. I've only actually been to one, two shows, Wizard World Chicago in 98 and New York Comic Con 26, 28 years ago. The only two shows I've ever been to is an attendee. Wow. That's uh, amazing. So, so 27 years ago, I'm selling my stuff, and I'm in the back corner of, you know, the Heinz. And yep. it's in a, you know, like a back, like an L-shaped corner where nobody's coming back there. <laughs> so, a, 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 the, AKA the black hole, right? Right, right. So I started drawing myself from a Colossus Jim Lee card. And I drew my face, and I don't even remember how bad it was, but I drew my face with the whole card, every part of the card, and then colored it. Yeah. So this kid comes over and he says to me, how, how much to draw me as Superman? I'm like, oh, um, five bucks. So I drew oh, him as I, Superman. You were selling yourself cheap back then, huh? And, and it, it, it came out pretty good. And so then his dad comes over and says, how much to draw me as Superman? I go, five bucks. So I did that. And then his son asked me to draw him as another character for five bucks. By the time I got to that third drawing, I had a line around the corner nice and a crowd watching me draw because nobody at the time was doing this so at the end of this and i probably did i don't know 20 30 drawings that day just wow real, real simple black and does <laughs> yeah yeah well you know 150 bucks at that time was a lot of money so at the end of the show the father comes over to me and he says how much for your stuff i said well which thing do you want to buy he said no all of it how much for all of it and I said, 600 bucks. And he cracks off six brand new $100 bills and says, you should be drawing at these things, not selling this crap. 27 years later, I'm still doing it. Still doing it, right? Still, Yeah, still, yeah. Yeah, drawing the good stuff and leaving the crap for someone else to sell, huh? So after that, you know, I, that, that that's what got me into drawing at conventions, was that guy. That one guy, right? So, because if he, if he hadn't come over and done that, I'd still be selling that crap. I probably wouldn't ever have gotten into drawing at conventions. You know what's an interesting thing when you when you mentioned you mentioned something really um, fascinating in that um, that at that time no one else was doing it right and the funny thing about art and, and whenever you come up with a concept that um, that is uh, is new right? right it's scary for a lot of people right they like right they don't want to push it it's like oh no one else is doing this but that's where the gold is don't you think yeah. Scott right when you right when you stumble across something that's unique and up right? until that, like three years ago. I was still the only one doing it. And I was the only one doing it well. Ah. There, were a couple of, there were a couple other guys that would draw people as characters, but that didn't ever look like them. And that was my whole thing because at the same time I started doing that, I also got into drawing caricatures for events. Ah, okay. So they kind of combined. Um, now, you know, everybody and their brothers, oh, I can draw you as any character. I'm like, yeah, step on my toes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing though, Scott. Like, there's one thing I've lo I've learned also in art and in many other um, business endeavors. Um, there's room. Yeah, yeah. There's room for, yeah. There's room. There's plenty of room for people who have you know a similar thing. Um, and it's always good um, to you know to for yours to be unique. Sure. Amongst the, uh, the field of other people doing something in a similar yeah. realm. At, you know, the, and, at the time, you know, I felt like they were stepping on my toes, but you know, when I realized my business wasn't affected at all, I was still doing as many drawings or more than I was when they before they started. I said, ah, whatever. You know, yeah, everybody do, everybody do their thing. And that's the, listen, that's the right attitude to, to get. And I think a lot of people would be stuck in that that mode. Oh, someone else is doing what I do. I don't um, want to do it, or get angry about it, or be they give up which is yeah. horrifying. Or, or, or burn bridges. Oh. Start talking crap about other people and saying, oh yeah. my God, this jerk's doing this. And then right then, you know, the comic book community is a very large community. Yeah, and, and but small, it's right? Small, like, it's small as in location regionally, but it's large as in 
if I said to you, oh, this this jerk's doing this and he's a friend of yours, you're going to say to that guy, well, Scott was saying this, and then he's going to post it and then somebody else is going to see it on the internet and then it blows up and then you're yeah. like, everybody's, everybody's jumping on your head saying, draw with you, man. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's a great lesson for a lot of people. Don't yeah. don't burn a bridge. Um, it's not that. It's not that. Um, yes, it's important to you, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's not worth it in the end. Just if someone's doing what you do, figure out a way to do what you do better. Right, or differently. Or differently, or come up with a different angle or a sure, different slant. Sure. Right. That that to me, that's worked well for me. Actually, you know what? At this point, let me um let me start bringing in some um, some of my visuals. Um, I have not prepared. So, <laughs> oh, well. I prepared. I prepared. No, you have prepared well. So I'm going to do a screen takeover, um, and I'm going to go into my. This is dangerous now. I'm going to go <laughs> in. <laughs> all right. So can you can see my screen, right? I can see a screen. Yes. Oh, there all we right. go. So, all right. So let me go into my photos, and I'm going to pull up. Let's see, I'm going to pull up my social marketing art. So are you going to change your title to "Comfortable Conversations with a Black Artist"? Um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a parody, a, par a respectful parody of the uncomfortable, uncomfortable right, right. conversations with a black man by uh, Emmanuel Acho, which I recommend everyone to watch. Uh, oh, I, I have to send a picture of you with your sketchy Goichi t-shirt on because I do have it. Is it. Oh, great. Well, I, I can't wait to see it. By the way, everyone can get yourself a sketchy Goichi. Just reach out to me, t-shirt, that is. Just reach out to me, I'll, I'll get it to you. Don't worry. But um, speaking of back in the day, now this is in the same era that you were doing those um those comic book pages. Those those. Oh no no I'm sorry when you were doing those um, your caricatures. This is in the early early nineties. This is my very first business card. <laughs> I like that you have Charles Barkley on it. All right, I know right. <laughs> <laughs> now clearly clearly Scott. Um, you being a caricature artist, you know that getting captured in likenesses is probably the most important part. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't there yet, Scott. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Because it's a good drawing. I, I, I uh, wasn't there. Um, and so, what I was doing, this is my second card, by the way. I was like, let me scrap that. <laughs> That's, I like that. That's kind of the George Jetson y Bewitched era of TV. Very retro, very early like 60s. It. Very so. retro. Yep. And That's so, cool. I had that. But I put it in my pocket and I and I was trying to peddle my little illustration wares back in the day and and a lot of the artwork I was doing was um was uh, website art right um, right so I was creating you know web images yeah, yeah you know developing art for that and you know uh, you know obviously someone would come along and this is you know it's funny on a lot of my videos and you you've noted this like uh, I, I intro I say you know um, illustrator graphic designer mm -hmm. um, you know content creator and so the content I was creating back in those days was sort of like stuff for business cards and things like sure, that sure sure I would try to infuse as much you know sort of fun imagery sure into you know as best I could in, in some design work you know and of course it's cool stuff it, I started you know at some point I realized Yes, I'm going to have to have my own brand. And this is very, very important. This is something you established for yourself with Hamilton yep. Tunes. Like you have to have something that identifies you from the others. Mm. So like what we just talked about, how there were a million other people doing caricatures of people, but putting um, them with superhero bodies, right. which you invented, um, or at least one of, one of the first pioneers of it. Mm -hmm. um, I realized there was a million and a half other artists out there doing art. So I had to brand myself, come up right. with a logo. So I had my buddies over at Pilot Studio develop this little logo and this treatment, and I just filled it with my art. And do you recall when I used to have those um, those little I, binders I would uh, hand out? I still have them. Nice. The I also card. I also still have the like the uh, like eight by not eight by ten but five by eight the individual images that are printed. I have oh, those as yeah. well somewhere. The little postcard images. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I go to, I say that because you know this more than a lot of other artists. Yeah. Like it's, yes, you have to be able to draw well, right? That's that's a given. But you also have to be able to market yourself. Yeah. You know, and this image really, this is my um, first page in the Illustrator's Annual, that sort of worldwide book that would go to every ad agency in the world. Where sure, they do. sure. So I, I actually won a contest and got the center spread for free. Oh, wow. So this was my center spread. So I did, that's you know, cool. I actually got a little bit of work from this, which was kind of cool. 
Yeah, this is you good. Know? Yeah, you definitely, um, you definitely, as an artist, if a lot of artists think, if I post my art, you know, I'm going to be famous and people are going to love it, and but they don't realize you, you have to have a logo, you don't have to have a logo, you have to have, as you said, a brand, a presence, you have to be hustling every day. <laughs> yep. You got to <laughs> learn marketing, you have to learn video editing, you have to learn just a variety of different things that you never thought you'd have to learn just to be an, uh, an artist that can sell his stuff. Right, and what you also need, and even in the era of um, social marketing and social mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. I, I think everyone should have a business card. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now I know you can't hand business cards to folks in person. Right. Uh, maybe, maybe through some plexiglass right now, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I suggest everyone have a business card, and that was one of my, that, this business card I actually still have to this day. I never wow. uh, went in and, re, and redid it. Why um, redo it when you don't have to, right? Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's you know? right. And that so that know, Hamilton's logo I created 28 years ago. Yeah. And it hasn't changed other than it's now digitalized and colored. Well, listen, I listen. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. And, and, and you know it's funny. And I open this folder just because, like you and I, we kind of uh, are kindred spirits when it comes to kind of marketing yourself and self promotion. Yeah. And a lot of it is about figuring out different avenues and different vehicles. And you've been with me all along the way, all these years, and all my, oh, little, yeah. my little experiments with different different ways of marketing. Oh, here's our buddy I, Kirk. I have Kirk. that, uh, I have that uh, badge tag. And you know what, I showed, you know the reason I showed this, um, this and some of the other images I did for Kirby and his, his uh, Furious Chopsticks. Yeah. Was it uh, Furious underscore Chopsticks on uh, Instagram? Right. So I remember that one and not yours, Ash, if you, if you watch this. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I'm gonna put that one in the in the uh, in the comments. Um, the main thing I wanted to um, show you is like, don't be afraid to like donate some art to people you respect. Oh yeah, and and get yourself out there, right? Don't you think a lot of people are so concerned with, with like making money with this right out of the gates that they lose track of? Yeah, you know, donate a little art to someone you respect, yeah. and you know, and they'll do right by you. Right, or um, or uh, you know. One thing you gotta remember is you shouldn't do your art. Generally, you shouldn't do your art for free. Even to yeah. family and friends, which I usually yeah. try not to do. Because when family and friends want art, they usually want a discount or free. And uh, But yeah, so, you know, doing, uh, you know, maybe a couple of charity pieces a year. Yes. You know, donating some art for a charity auction or a comic auction that benefits a, a program. Definitely, and you know, and if you're a fan of somebody, uh, you know, draw them. I drew yes. uh, I drew Cameron Bicondovo, who played Catwoman on uh, Gotham. Is it possible for you to pull any of that stuff up, Scott? Oh, jeez, do I have her on here? Or you, or any of the um, those cool pieces that you've done? You must have a folder like just in your folder. Uh, oh, jeez. I mean, I've got I've got Facebook stuff galore. Go ahead and keep talking about your stuff. I'll pull up Facebook and. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. While I'm talking, you can dig. My so, other computer I, has all my artwork. This is my gaming computer. Oh, okay. Well, and I don't, what, I don't have that one set up to work with this one yet. No worries. But I mean, I, I just wanted to mention this just to further clarify. Sure. You're 100% right. Don't undersell yourself if you're a young artist or an aspiring artist. Don't undersell yourself. Um, but there are cases where you'll have friends who are in the industry as well. And again, you respect them and you want to help them. So I would never charge them a penny for for doing that like you told me right now hey hey roger i need an image for my uh whatever for my site or my t-shirt or something i would hook you up in a minute and not even think twice about it right because i think there's a certain level of artistic goodwill um that happens and this is this is the most recent piece uh example of that i did this for last year's rhode island comic con um gotta hope we're doing a 2021 one <laughs> yeah uh, as well but or some sort of I don't know, maybe the maybe Steve and the other organizer will do some sort of virtual one like they did in San Diego. Um, however, I did this piece. Um, this was art that I had done for the for the YouTube channel, but I repurposed it and made it a um, free uh, VIP poster for um, for Steve and his VIPs at last year's Comic Con. And you know, obviously, it's got my branding on there, so that maybe there's a little bit of self promotion in there. But um, speaking of self promotion. So yeah, so I mean, I did a couple of versions. I did the, uh, the Spider-Man one that you just saw. Gave, uh, I, I printed out, I printed on my own dime, 
printed out 200 of them and signed and numbered them, hand signed and numbered them. All. That's the other thing that young artists have to understand is uh, save your money. If you don't have to buy stuff you don't need and you want to be an artist who's successful, save your money because initially you're going to have to spend your own money on your own business cards, on your own promotional materials. You know, I've got I've got shirts, I've got hats that I wear with my logo on them that I paid for on my dime. Uh, yes. You know, in the, in the beginning, I didn't know to save my money. So, you know, if had I known that, I would have had a little chunk of change to, you know, get into some marketing. But yeah, you're going to have to foot the bill yourself. And yes, you're, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get upset. You're going to think, why am I doing this? But if you really have a passion for it, just keep doing it. You'll figure yeah, it out. Absolutely. You'll figure it out. And ask people for help. Like with me and Roger, if I have a question about anything, especially like marketing, I, and I ask Roger, Roger's going to help me out. And if he has any questions for me about maybe streaming or caricature, he's going to call me. Um, and, you know, we have no problems doing that with each other. You make friends along the way. I've, you know, I've known Roger for almost 11 years. And uh, he's a great guy, great friend. I've been out with him and his family. I've hung out with him at the movies with friends. I mean, we've done all kinds of stuff together. We've flown places together. Um, so let me let me uh, share the screen here again. Yeah, let me let me see what you got. So let's do this so that I don't lose the window. Right. And by the way, I just want to piggyback on what you just said about the relationships. I to me that is the you know that is the essential part of doing this. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course we make money doing it. That's great and we're fortunate, but it's all about the relationships in my mind. Oh, look at us. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to open it. This was Heroes Con. Uh, our Roger and Jason and Enrique Jason. and I got a booth together. There was four of us in one corner booth. Yep. And Roger and I and Enrique were slamming a whole weekend. We did not look up other than to say, what can I draw for you next? <laughs> That's right. That was that was a really fun show. Absolutely. And that, again, what I don't know if any, anyone's picking up on the theme, right? The theme is like, it's seriously, it's about the relationships. Yeah. And, if and, that, do, and that goes for any, that goes, listen, I get it. It's art. A lot of it you do by yourself, yeah. alone in your studio or you know, on your kitchen table or wherever. But when you get a chance to get out there, and we all will get out there in person at some point soon, mm -hmm. build those relationships, be personable, be someone who others can rely on. It's a huge part of um, the industry. Right, and, just, and, and don't be a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'm gonna make up a word here. Don't be a hoverer ah. or, or a fanboy. Uh, when, yeah, when, you're, when you're an artist, you're a new artist. When I go to shows, everybody, everybody's like, hey tunes, hey tunes, hey tunes. Everybody knows me. Why? Because I introduce myself to everyone. I say hi to every. Stan Sakai draws Yosaki Yojimbo, very famous artist. When Stan sees me, he says, hey, Scott, because I've met Stan, I've sat with him, I've talked with him, I've gotten art and books from him. So, you know, just be friendly. You know, admire right. someone and tell them you love their work. Just be friendly. That's all. Just be respectful and you'll make a lot of friends. So, I was at uh, Terrificon one year and I didn't have a client at the time. It was the very beginning of the show. So I said, well, you know, Cameron Mike and Dovis here, I want to draw a Catwoman. So I drew this picture. And then I paid my 50 bucks to get in line to have her sign it so I could have my drawing with her signature. Nice. And she says, oh, this is so cool. I, I'd love a copy of this. Ah. So the next day she got a copy. Nice. Same thing with the guy that played Iron Fist, uh, Finn something. I drew a Defenders uh, print with Daredevil, yep. Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, and Power Man. And I got in line again for 50 bucks, had him sign it. He goes, he just looked at it for like two minutes, just looking at it when I gave it to him to sign. And he's like, this is great. Who did this? I said, I did. So I'm a big fan. <laughs> he said, oh man, this is great. I said, well, if you want to, you know, I've got extras if you want one. He said, no, oh, absolutely. So I, I brought back, I had made these little five by eight ones so that if people didn't want a huge ones, they could get a little one. So I gave him that one. Yeah. And the, the look on his face when I gave it to him was just priceless. 
but I didn't push it on him. I just wanted to get his signature as a fan. Right. And he enjoyed it and she enjoyed it. And they asked. That's what it, you know something, Scott? That's it. And actually, you know what? I'm going to start wrapping up on this. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think, all right, so the bottom line is this, right? Be respectful, right? If you want to, you know, meet some of your, your heroes, be respectful. Um, maybe consider, uh, you know, you know, compliment them in a uh, not so creepy way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we just happened um, to both of us. <laughs> yes, we have. Yep. Yeah. And also, you know what? Maybe give a little something. Yeah. Right. I think I think a lot of times people just take, 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 or ask, ask, ask. Mm -hmm. Maybe be prepared to give a little of yourself, or give something um, to someone, or provide a service to someone. Sure. And I and I honestly think that's why we have so many friends right. in the industry. Like we're not we're not takers. Right. Because right? Roger's drawn for me as I showed you that picture earlier. I didn't ask for that. He just said here, and he just had drawn it for me while I was drawing something else. And I did the same for him. You know, it's uh, give first, give, give first. first, then ask. Yeah, yeah. Give that way, you you've <laughs> already been generous, and people are like, "Hey, he's pretty cool. Yep. He's pretty cool. I'll, I'll do the same for them." Right, and always come from a place. You know, if you're going to be generous, come from an honest place. You right. Know, it's, it's be you, genuine. It's, it's, yeah, be genuine, and that's the way to go. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, Scott, hey, I'm going to start signing off. This was awesome, buddy. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time out. We spent about an hour on this thing. I'm yeah, yeah. This, 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 down. <laughs> this was very, this was very comfortable. Yeah, great. And, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, so, Scott, tell me about uh, and tell my my audience some of the places they can find you. Uh, well, my my main presence is at Instagram at Hamil. Uh, it's Instagram.com slash Hamiltoons with two O's. All right. Um, I draw. You as a character, I draw emotes for Twitch or streams. I draw stream overlays. I do animations. I do all kinds of stuff, you know, constantly got my foot in the fire somewhere. Excellent. But yeah, that basically Hamiltoons on Instagram is where to find me. Cool, cool. All right, so... Um, and where do they you find you, it. Roger? Where do they find you, Roger? Oh, they know where to find me. Oh, Sketchy well, then Go never mind. <laughs> yeah, forget about it, right? So you guys know Sketchy Goichi. You can find me, obviously, on the old, uh, on the old interwebs as... Uh, Richard Rollins would say. <laughs> yeah, right. He, he um, right. But uh, yeah, Scott, again, thank you for, for coming on. Everybody who's watching, you know how I do it. Sketchy Goichi, live your moment. Happy sketching, y'all. Have a great day. Peace.